In today's video, I will be walking you through the steps of setting up TPT to connect to Snowflake Data Warehouse. So let's get to it. Alright, so like I mentioned in today's video, I will be walking you through the steps of connecting TPT to Snowflake Data Warehouse. So there are two ways of connecting TPT to Snowflake. The first one is through TPT Cloud and the second one is through the open source version of TPT which is called dpt core so dpt core is a cli version of dpt and it's a free version however the cloud version is paid so if you want to try it out i think you do get 14 days of free trial but after that you'll have to pay uh, but in today's video i will be walking you through the steps of uh, connecting dpt core to snowflake data warehouse okay so this is the library documentation page uh, where it mentions the libraries that we need to install in order to connect dpt core to snowflake data warehouse so these are the two uh, libraries or packages that we need to install dpt core and dpt snowflake so again dpt core is the dpt open source version and uh, dpt snowflake is the library that will enable communication between these two tools okay so we will go ahead and install these two and proceed with the setup process okay so i will switch over to my visual studio code and what i will need to do is basically open a folder from my workspace where i will have this be stored so i'm just going to open my repos folder and this will open it in your visual studio code so previously i've gone through the process of setting up dpt to mysql postgre and redshift and if you have watched any of these videos the process for this one should be very similar okay so once you have that ready then the next thing that we we'll need to do is go to terminal and we need to create a virtual environment so the virtual environment that we need to create is so that it can allow us to install our packages or libraries so i'm going to go ahead and do that And I will call this dpt uh, fee and fee. Okay, so this will create our Python virtual environment now. And what we need to do is basically activate this so that we can now start using it, like so. Okay, so my virtual environment is now activated. And the next thing that we'll need to do is basically move over here to the documentation here and we just need to install this so i'm just going to copy this and i will put it right here copy and paste here okay and basically enter it okay so this will this will install the libraries basically it's going to install dpt core and dpt snowflake uh, and then from there we can proceed with the setup okay so it has completed and now if you check pip freeze basically this will list the libraries that have been installed you can see that we have dpt core here and we also have dpt snowflake the other way of doing this or handling this libraries is through requirements folder or, or, or requirements file so you can have all of your libraries or packages that you want to install inside requirements file and basically you can just go ahead and, and, and install it so if you had something like this so for example i have here dpt core uh, dpt mysql redshift postgre uh, you can basically add add the one for dpt snowflake like this and just save it and when you come to your terminal you can just do pip install and install the requirements basically this will install all of the libraries that that are in your requirements file okay so you can do something like this and uh, basically it's you know for this it's going to detect that you already had some so it might attempt to uninstall them and install them again all right so now that we have our libraries installed the next thing that we'll need to do is go ahead and do dpt in it so i'm just going to go here and i will do dpt in it okay so dpt init basically initializes your project and i'm going to call this snowflake okay so right here in my databases i just need to pick the one for snowflake so i do have the rest of the other ones because i installed the libraries for those but here i'm just going to pick number three which is for snowflake 
and here it's now asking for my account so you can see here it's it wants the value from um, the HTTP all the way up to before snowflake computing.com so to get that uh, just go to your snowflake account and for me I'm just going to go to my snowflake account and I need to copy this so I'm going to copy this and I will put it right here okay so you can see that it wants uh, the value from here all the way up to here so that is basically the value from here up to before snowflake computing.com so like that like this okay so this is the value that I need to copy I'll copy this and I will paste it right here okay and then now it's asking for the username so I'm just going to log in uh, to my snowflake account uh, and then I will go to my users I'll just quickly show you my users so I do have um, three users right now uh, the user that I will be using for this is this demo user so that is the user that you just need to uh, put it here uh, or if you already know the user that you use to log into your snowflake uh, you can use that user so for me I'm just going to put this demo user okay and I will use password to log in and I will enter the password for that one here okay and then it's also asking for the role that this user can connect to your data warehouse and I am going to just pick the role for this one account admin so I'm going to go back and use account admin so when you create a user in data warehouse uh, or snowflake data warehouse you also do need to assign the role that that user will use so if you have a different role just go ahead and use uh, put that role right here so for me I'm just using account admin and then uh, now it's asking for the uh, warehouse name so basically this is the a uh, compute uh, or the virtual um, compute engine that uh, your snowflake account will use to run your queries so I'm going to go to my admin again and I'll go to warehouses and I want to use one of these warehouses I'll probably take this one that I created a few days ago for demo warehouse so I will pick this one here demo warehouse okay and then now it's asking for the database so I'm going to go back again to my snowflake and the database that I will use is this one for dpt demo so I'm going to use that dpt demo and the schema that I will use is this one for staging actually let me just use this one for paste because this is where I want to write my data to so I'm going to use space so I'm going to choose space and remember if you don't if you don't specify the default schema uh, if you don't specify the schema here the default one will be taken which is usually public okay so public will be taken if you don't specify this and for the threads I will just leave that one as uh, default okay and then I will click enter and that's it so my snowflake project should now be created so I'm just going to exit out of this um, so now this is your snowflake structure so you can see that dpd has created now all of these folders so we have this analysis we have macros models this is again where we will put our sql models or, or transformation queries and you have seeds and snapshots so snapshots is where our type 2 logic will go to but yeah so our structure has been created now so the next thing that we'll need to do is to test if this uh, connection is working properly so you just need to switch into that project and all we have to do is do dpt debug so dpt debug will check our connections and see if everything is okay okay so you, as you can see this one has passed all of the connections are good so that means that we are able to connect into our snowflake data warehouse okay and if you have any issues here for example you might run into an error of whether you know the the, it could be the the username is not correct or the password is not correct or the database is not correct all of that will be available inside 
uh, your dpt uh, profile so if you go to your users there will be dpt folder that will be created and if you open that you can see the configurations that we specified when we were setting it up so if anything is wrong then you can quote your profiles and update it it could be the database or it might be the role or the user just go ahead uh, sometimes it's even the account name so if you didn't put the account name properly uh, it's going to fail so all of that will be logged in your profiles and you will need to go there and update it okay but for me th this one successfully went through so then the next thing that we will need to do is uh, run a test files to make sure that we are able to write to snowflake okay so to do that if you go to your models there is a a model that is given to you by default when this one is set up so you have this one first model and second model and this is very generic uh but i think we can use this okay i think we can use this to test if we are able to write this model into our snowflake data warehouse okay so um you can see this first one is materialized as a table and the second one is materialized as a few okay so the configuration for that is not mentioned the way it's done for the table but you can find it here in your project okay so by default everything in the everything in the uh, example folder will be materialized as a few unless you override it so this one we have overwritten it to be created as a table the second one we haven't done anything so this will be created as a table the second one will be created as a few and again when we run it we are expecting this data to be created inside our paste schema so let's go there so if we go here in the paste schema currently we don't have any data and what we expect this when it runs is that we should have a table here created called my first dpt model and also a few called my second dpt model this one's ready right here okay so let's go ahead and do that so i'm just going to run dpt and run okay so this should be able to create these objects for us now in our warehouse okay so you can see here we have created it successfully uh and it's created inside this schema okay and the second one is also created with the same name and it completely i mean it successfully ran so let's go back to our snowflake now and if we refresh it we can see that now there's a typo called my first tpt model and a few called my second tpt model okay so we can now establish that we have successfully made our connections to snowflake using dpt core and we are able to write data to it so in the next video i will be showing you how to actually make some actual transformation data so we will uh, load some data into staging and i think i do have some tables here so we will use some of this data to make some transformations using dpt and write the transform data pack to snowflake so do stay tuned up for this video but in today's video, I just wanted to quickly show you guys how you can set up dpt core connections to your Snowflake data warehouse. I hope this video was helpful and if it was, please do give thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Alright guys, bye bye.